So right now, we're at this Trump rally in Schnecksville, Pennsylvania, waiting for former President Trump's remarks later for 7 p.m. tonight. We're told that Trump is running an hour late, so he's going to be here at around 8 o'clock. And we're just told that we will see a special event on stage. So right now, we see there's a screen behind us showing this true social post by Trump about a month ago. It says, quote, it's important for the good of our country that Joe Biden and I debate issues that are so vital to America and the American people. Therefore, I'm calling for debates anytime, anywhere, any place. Debates can be run by the corrupt DNC or their subsidiary, the commission or the presidential on a presidential debates. CPD. I look forward to receiving a response. Thank you for attention to this matter. And this is the post that we were just given out by the Trump campaign here at this rally. And we were told that there will be a special event happening on this stage just momentarily. Uh, we know that former President Trump has been calling on President Biden to debate him even earlier than what usually would become the schedule for presidential debates. And of course, the time and the place, President Trump says, would be up to President Biden to choose. But so far, President Biden has not directly confirmed that he's up for a debate. Actually, Biden said about a month ago that whether or not he's going to debate Trump will depend on, quote, Trump's behavior. So we have not heard a formal response from the Biden campaign about such debates. And right now, regarding what former President Trump will do at this rally or what we're going to see at this special event, we're going to keep an eye on this stage. Of course, right behind us here in Pennsylvania, this battleground state where President Biden will also spend most of next week campaigning in this battleground state. And President Trump, after here, campaigning here today for this rally, he will go to New York for a Monday trial for his hush money trial. And that's going to be the first trial that happens on Trump before the November election, likely the only trial. So a lot to watch for at tonight's rally regarding what Trump is going to say about the upcoming trial. He said on Friday he will testify and tell the truth. And also, of course, regarding what this call to debate uh, for Biden would mean for former President Trump. He's going to say about it at this rally and what the special events will really do about that conversation. So right now, let's turn our camera back to the stage. Standing there on that lawn, discount sheet, store bought tan, flip flops and cut off jeans. Somewhere between that set and the sun, I'm on fire, I'm born to run. You looked at me and I was done, but we were just getting started. I was singing to you, you were singing to me. I was so alive, never been more free. Fired up my daddy's lighter and we sang, oh, oh, oh. Stayed there till they forced us out and took the long way to your house. I can still hear the sound of you saying don't go When I think about you, I think about 17 I think about my old G, I think about the stars in the sky Funny how a melody sounds like a memory Like a soundtrack to a July Saturday You probably wouldn't even know who I am But if I whispered your name I bet I'd still be a spark From back when I was gasoline And this old tattoo had brand new ink And we 
Didn't care what your mom would think about your name on my arm. Baby, is it spring or is it summer? The guitar sound or the beat of that drum? You hear sometimes late at night on your radio. Even though you're a million miles away, when you hear born in a USA, you relive those glory days so long ago. When you think about me, do you think about seventeen? Do you think about my old Jeep? Think about the stars in the sky. Funny how.
down to Georgia, he was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind because he was way behind and he was willing to make a deal. When he came across this young man sewing on a fiddle and playing it hot, and the devil jumped up on a hickory stump and said, boy, let me tell you what. I guess you didn't know it, but I'm a fiddle player too. And if you'd care to take a dare, I'll make a bet with you. Now you play pretty good fiddle, boy, but give the devil his due. I bet a fiddle of gold against your soul because I think I'm better than you. The boy said, my name's Johnny and it might be a sin, but I'll take your bet you're going to regret because I'm the best as ever been. Johnny, you're rising up your bow and play your fiddle hard. Cause hell's broke loose in Georgia and the devil deals the cards. And if you win, you get this shiny fiddle made of gold. But if you lose, the devil gets your soul. Opened up his case and he said, I'll start this show. And fire flew from his fingertips as he rosened up his bow. And he pulled the bow across the strings and it made an evil hiss. And then a band of demons joined in and it sounded something like this. Johnny said, well, you're pretty good, old son, but sit down in that chair right there and let me show you how it's done. Fire on the mountain, run, boys, run. The devil's in the house of the rising sun. Chicken in the bread pan, picking out dough. Granny says you don't bite, no child, no. The devil bowed his head because he knew that he'd been beat. And he laid that golden fiddle on the ground at Johnny's feet. Johnny said, devil, just come on back if you ever want to try again. I done told you once, you son of a bitch, I'm the best as ever been. He played fire on the mountain, run, boy, run. Devil's in the house of the rising sun. The chicken in the bread pan, I'm picking out dough. Granny, when you don't fight, no child, no.
It's a little complicated All tied up, no more love And I'd hate to see you waiting Take me to the 
Bunny Walsh, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Good to be here on this windy day. So you were a sheriff for so long, 20 years. What have you seen and how is the law and order situation in our country right now? Well, it's changed because under Donald Trump, we had a lot of support for law and order. And we had, a, a, I was one of the first sheriffs when he was uh, brought in, when he came into the White House, he called sheriffs in from all over the country. And he said, I support you. I support the local, state, and federal. That's gone now. And the local, state, and federal deputies and police officers don't feel like they're supported. And it's a shame because many of them have left uh, the occupation and it's very hard to recruit people. And now, given the border situation, we've heard former President Trump talking about uh, so-called migrant crime right now. Right. How do you think that topic... Okay. Sheriff Bunny Walsh, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Good to be here on this windy day. So you were a sheriff for so long, 20 years. What have you seen? And Still it's a real good bet The best is yet to come Best is yet to come And babe, won't that be fine Youth 
think you've seen the sun, but you ain't seen it shine. Wait till the warm-up's underway. Wait till our lips have met. And wait till you see that sunshine day. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be fine? Best is yet to come, come the day you're mine. Come the day you're mine. I'm gonna teach you to fly. We've only tasted the wine. We're gonna drain the cup dry. <laughs> Wait till your charms are ripe for these arms to surround. You think you've flown before, but baby, you ain't left the ground. Wait till you lock in my embrace. Wait till I draw you near. Wait till you see that sunshine place. Ain't nothing like it here. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be fine? The best is yet to. Come, come, the day you're mine. Come, the day you're mine, and you're gonna be mine. Cowboy went riding out one dark and windy day. Up on a ridge he rested as he went along his way. When all at once a mighty herd of red-eyed cows he saw plowing through the ragged skies and up a cloudy draw. Their brands were still on fire and their hooves were made of steel. Their horns were black and shiny and their hot breath he could feel. Sheriff sure, Bunny Walsh, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Good to be here on this. Through him as they thundered through the sky. Okay. Sheriff Bunny Walsh, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Good to be here on this windy day. So you were a sheriff for so long, 20 years. What have you seen and how is the law and order situation in our country right now? Well, it's changed because under Donald Trump, we had a lot of support for law and order. And we had, a, a, I was one of the first sheriffs when he was uh, brought in, when he came into the White House, he called sheriffs in from all over the country. And he said, I support you. I support the local, state, and federal. That's gone now. And the local, state, and federal deputies and police officers don't feel like they're supported. And it's a shame because many of them have left uh, the occupation and it's very hard to recruit people. And now given the border situation, we've heard from our President Trump talking about um, so-called migrant crime right now. Right. How do you think that topic has impacted voters' concerns in this election? Well, it's very difficult because there's people coming over the border who are not vetted. We don't know who they are. Uh, they're from countries all over the world. They are fighting age men. They're not families. And I'm very concerned, as is everybody, that the migrants coming in are not vetted. We don't know who they are. We don't know their intention. We don't know their plans. And what that makes is the cities and the counties and the states very unsafe. Okay. Sheriff Bunny Walsh, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Good Ghost Riders in the Sky 
in and said goodbye Now I'm back and not ashamed to cry I really 
escape.
President Trump's rally in Schnecksville, Pennsylvania, and he is expected, he was expected to start speaking at around 7 o'clock Eastern Time, but we were told later that he's arriving now at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, and we just, we just saw some motorcade pulling in in the back, the crowd was cheering, we're not sure if that is President Trump arriving, meanwhile, this is his last rally before his Monday hush money trial in New York City, and he, I, he is expected to talk more about the legal cases facing him in his rally tonight. Another topic that is right now unfolding at the moment is Iran's latest drone attacks on Israel. IDF has confirmed that over a hundred drones have been launched from Iran targeting Israel and they are expected to arrive within hours. And so this afternoon, President Biden returned from Delaware, from his beach house in Delaware, to the White House for meetings with his national security team, including Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, Secretary of State Blinken, and also with national security officials. And that meeting, meanwhile, happened at the Oval, happened at the White House Situation Room. And meanwhile, the White House also sent out a statement from the NSC saying that President Biden is getting constant updates on the situation on the Middle East. And also, they are in constant communications with Israeli officials. And meanwhile, there have been rumors about President Biden potentially giving a, a, an address to the nation on the latest attacks from Iran on Israel today. But later, the White House called a lid at around 5.13 p.m., effectively saying, no, that's not going to happen, at least not today, as that means that President Biden will not have any public events Ladies after 5.13 p.m. And right now, President Trump's Trump, Trump rally is getting more heated as congressmen will now start speaking as part of the free program. And another big topic to watch for tonight will be how President Trump addresses the latest attacks from Iran on Israel. He has been posting on Twitter social, saying how the U.S. should stand with Israel and calling on the administration to do the same. So a lot to watch for tonight at this rally to see how President Trump will address the latest situation in the Middle East. Let's pan the camera back to the stage. Whoa! Look! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, President Donald Trump is in the house! Are you, are we ready to save America? Are we ready to make America strong again? Make America safe again? And to borrow a phrase, to make America great again. Is Pennsylvania Trump country? Are we ready to elect Donald J. Trump, the next president of the United States? Have you had enough of sleepy Joe Biden? Man, and his left-wing crazies that are running the White House. Everybody, we could all go through A to Z, the crises and problems that Joe Biden has created for the American people. A, Afghanistan. B, border. C, crime. D, deficits. E, energy crisis. F. 
Let's go, Brandon! Yeah. All right. Let's go, Brandon. So, <laughs> we all know that victory in 24 runs through Pennsylvania. It runs through the Lehigh Valley. And you know what? Along with making sure we elect, re elect Donald Trump, we have some house races that we can, we can win. One right here in, in the 7th Congressional. Have you heard of uh, Susan Wilde? Well, we got at least one of the candidates running against her that's here, Maria Montero. You know what Maria calls her? Maria calls her San Fran Susan. You know why? Because she votes 100% of the time with Nancy Pelosi. Oh, yeah. We also have Rob Bresnahan from the 8th Congressional. All right, Rob's out there. Let's give him Rob a hand. Let's make sure we help him as much as we can. We, we also, through Pennsylvania, have the opportunity to take that gavel away from Chuck Schumer. We need to elect Dave McCormick, a U.S. Senator of Pennsylvania. He's a great man. And, of course, the White House. And we must elect the superior-minded, the intellectual, the strategic, the great negotiator, the great leader, Donald Trump, the next president. 47. Hey, he's already once proven to be a great president, right? He sure has. And what do you think the next four years are going to look like under Donald Trump's presidency? Think about it. Think about it. Our national security will greatly be strengthened. USA! 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 USA chants will come back and we won't listen to Let's Go Brandon anymore either. Our border will be secure under President Trump. He did it once, he'll do it again. Our energy policy won't be the gas backwards policy of the Biden administration. Gasoline will be a dollar less and it will fuel our economy. Our military, our military recruitment will be up and woke will be down. They will be proud. Hey, by the way, we got service men and women here. We have, we have veterans here today. Thank you for your service to our country. Our allies will respect us under President Trump and our adversaries will fear us. And we will have peace rather than the chaos created by this administration. Peace. Our economy, spending will be curtailed, inflation will be over, interest rates will come down, trade for our farmers and our manufacturers will once again be enhanced, taxes will be competitive, uh, regulations will be minimal, and small businesses will thrive again. Of just a few things President Trump's delivered before and will deliver again. What about crime? How about the crime that's, exi that's existed here? How about how strong President Trump is on crime and how much he supports the men and women in blue? Pennsylvania's America's finest. Thank you for your service. And keep this in mind, folks. The swamp. Who's going to drain the swamp? It needs to be drained more than ever. President Trump is the man, the person to do it. Trump, 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 Freedom. Our freedom will stop being eroded as it is in this administration, and freedom will ring throughout America. Our constitutional republic under President Trump will be secure. And you want to know what? It's going to drive the biased media crazy, isn't it? We need to unite all that truly love America. We need to unite. We have to vote. We need to vote early. 
We need to vote on election day. This is the most important election of our lifetime. We cannot take anything for granted. Volunteer. Be all in. In God we trust. But as we maximize the voting, we elect Donald J. Trump, we will do all our part for our country, for the world, by winning Pennsylvania and assure, in the words of the great Abraham Lincoln, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom and a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, shall never perish from the earth. God bless you. God bless Donald Trump. God bless the United States of America.
Welcome, the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that life to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Across the plains of Texas I'm see the shining sea Detroit down to Houston And New York to LA Where there's pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say Pennsylvania, what a great place. USA! 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 Thank you very much. You know, the pilot said it's too windy to land, sir. I said, that's okay. Land anyway. We have no choice. It's windy out here. It's windy, but it's beautiful. It's Pennsylvania. It's our place. I'm thrilled to be back in this beautiful Commonwealth with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. That's what you are. With your help, we're going to win Pennsylvania. We're going to defeat crooked Joe Biden, and we're going to make America great again. Before going any further, I want to say God bless the people of Israel. They're under attack right now. That's that's because we show great weakness. This would not happen. The weakness that we've shown is unbelievable, and it would not have happened if we were in office. You know that. They know that. Everybody knows that. But America prays for Israel. We send our absolute support to everyone in harm's way. This is an attack that would not have happened. I mean, to think about, to think about what we have to go through and the things we put up with, with the border, with uh, no energy independence, with all electric cars. Would everybody like to buy an electric car for the rest of you? 
But we will return the world to peace through strength, and it'll happen very quickly. I will revive American strength abroad, and we will restore American strength at home. We were respected four years ago all over the world. Today, we are considered a joke. It's not going to be for long. Believe me, it's not going to be for long. We will quickly rebuild the greatest economy in the history of the world like we had it just four years ago. It was just announced that inflation is once again raging. It's close to 4% again. Here we go. When I left office, we had virtually no inflation. First of all, Crooked Joe, he claimed inflation was transitory. Remember that? Then he said it was temporary. Then he said it won't happen. It really won't happen. And then he said, well, it's much higher than expected. And then the supply chain slows. And then the energy went through the roof. Putin, Putin, they called it Putin price hikes. It wasn't only Putin. It was Putin and plenty of other things that Biden got wrong. Because frankly, with Putin, Ukraine would have never happened. Israel attack both October 7th and today would have never happened. Then he blamed price gouging and junk fees. But all of America knows that the real blame for this nightmare lies with one person, crooked Joe Biden, as crooked as you can get. That's why the people of Pennsylvania are going to tell crooked Joe, you're fired. Get out. You're fired. One of the leading drivers of Biden's inflation disaster is his war on American energy, and Pennsylvania energy is our big problem. They're not wrong. They're not wrong. He's done everything wrong. Think of it. We've been in this mess together for three and a half years. Only a little more than six months until that most important day in the history of our country, November 5th. Think of that. But what has he done that's good? Nothing. Has anything that he's done turned out? Everything he touches turns to shit. That's true. true. Under Biden, gasoline prices are up over 50 percent and electricity prices are up 39 percent, rising 13 times faster than under the previous. Think of that, 13 times faster than under the previous seven years. When I'm back in the White House, we will end Joe Biden's inflation train wreck and we will tell Pennsylvania, drill, baby, drill. Get back to drilling. (laughs) Under my leadership, we had energy independence, and soon we would have had energy dominance. We were going to be dominant. We were bigger than Russia. We were bigger than Saudi Arabia. And then he stopped. But then he started again. He went back to Trump policies because the price started going up so high. But the day after the election, First of all, if he wins, our country is going to be destroyed. The day after the election, if he wins, he will stop drilling and he'll go back to wind, which doesn't work. He'll go back to all sorts of things that don't work. And they've proven that when it comes to Biden, he launched an extremist crusade actually to smash oil and gas. But Pennsylvania is one of the big oil and gas, largely due to me. He wanted to smash it. Biden has imposed the savage natural gas export ban that's putting countless Pennsylvania jobs at risk. He's risking your lives. He's risking your jobs. But he doesn't care because all he cares about is the Green New Scam, the Green New Deal, the Green New Scam. The Green News scam, one of the biggest hoaxes. Biden's also trying to abolish gasoline-powered automobiles and force everyone into an all-electric car. But I have good news for you, all of you that love those trucks. He wants to make your truck all-electric, too. No more gasoline-powered. 
On day one, I will terminate Crooked Joe's insane electric vehicle mandate. Gone. Day one. That's going to happen on day one. And I'll end Joe Biden's natural gas export ban on behalf of the people of Pennsylvania, who I love. I went to school here, right? I went to school in Pennsylvania. I love Pennsylvania. As we rescue our economy, we will also rescue our democracy. Our democracy is under, really under siege. Our Second Amendment is under siege, but not with me, it's not. With me, they don't touch it. But our Second Amendment is under siege. Our democracy is under siege because of Joe Biden. Joe Biden loves to say that democracy is on the ballot in this election. If it is, we're going to win in the greatest landslide in history. Because we're the ones who are fighting to save our democracy. And crooked Joe Biden is the demented tyrant. He's a demented tyrant who is trying to destroy our democracy. Two days from now, the entire world will witness the commencement of the very first Biden trial. They're all Biden trials. You know that, right? And I'm proud to do it for you. Have a good time watching. Have a good time watching. On Monday in New York City, I will be forced to sit fully gagged. I'm not allowed to talk. Can you believe it? They want to take away my constitutional right to talk. I have a crooked judge. This has never happened before, by the way. You do know that, right? Fully gagged before a highly conflicted and corrupt judge who suffers from TDS. Does anyone know what TDS is? Correct. Trump derangement syndrome. As the radical left Democrat Party seeks to do anything possible to keep me from running and winning in this election. And let me tell you, we're leading by so much, they don't know what's happening. But you know what they'd love to do? I did nothing wrong from day one. I did nothing yet. Russia, Russia, yet Ukraine, 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 yet every hoax imaginable. With all of the things they did, with millions of pages of study, they found nothing, which makes me perhaps the most honest guy almost in the world, I think. They found nothing. But like all true communist show trials, this is what you call a communist show trial. And we're going communist, don't kid yourself. We don't win this election. This country is finished. Thank you very much. I love you too. I love you too. That's why I put up with this stuff. Uh... Remember, I've been indicted more than Al Capone, the great gangster. I never heard the word indictment. I didn't know. Now all of a sudden, if I fly over a Democrat state, they call it a blue state, I get subpoenaed before a grand jury. It's horrible. Honestly, it's horrible what they're doing. They're ruining this country. They're destroying the country in every way. There's not a thing he's done that's been good. But this is a case of blatant manipulation of the law and the facts like Russia, 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 and all of the other hoaxes that we've had to endure. The phony indictment has been torn apart and demolished by legal experts from across the political spectrum. Every single legal expert without exception that I can find has said, as an example, Alan Dershowitz. Alan Dershowitz said, I've been doing this for 60 years, teaching criminal cases, defending criminal cases, writing about criminal cases, and this is by far the weakest criminal case I've ever seen in my 60 years. There is absolutely nothing here. There is no misdemeanor. There is no felony. There is no federal crime. Every American is in danger if we don't have an objective standard of justice that's equally applicable to all. That's Alan Dershowitz. He's a Democrat. He's no fan of mine. He's a Democrat and a Harvard professor, smart guy, but he's a Democrat. He writes that. Here's another one. Highly respected former federal prosecutor, Andrew McCarthy, stated, it would take us an hour just to flush out all of the problems with this case. The premise of this prosecution is falsification. What Bragg, that's Alvin Bragg, he's a Soros-appointed prosecutor. 
And by the way, crime in New York is at record highs. The violent crime, murders, killings, all of the stuff, muggings, and he leaves them alone. They've got so when I go into court over nothing, it's not a crime. When I go into court, they've got like nine prosecutors. And in the meantime, people that murder, nobody does anything. What Bragg, Alvin Bragg is trying to do is enforce federal campaign finance law which he doesn't have any authority whatsoever to do. He's not allowed to finance. And by the way, the federal government looked at it, turned it down. It's a garbage case that he himself rejected a year earlier. When Bragg came into office, he's the district attorney. He said, I'm not doing this case. This case is bullshit. And then what happens? He does the case. And you know, here's the thing. They could have done this case seven years ago. You know the way they're trying to rush it? This case would have been fine seven years ago. Do whatever you want. They do it right smack in the middle of our election campaign. And I talk about our campaign. We want to do it now. And the same thing with deranged Jack Smith, all of these people. These are Biden people. He can't win an election. He can't put two sentences together. He can't find the stairs on a platform to walk off after he makes about a two minute speech. Here they are. I got one, two. Three. I got one in the back. I got him all over the place. He can't find him. He's looking around. Where are the stairs? All they're trying to do, they're weaponizing government. They're trying to harm your favorite president, hurt him, so that we can't win an election. They've weaponized elections like a third world country, like a banana republic. Renowned legal scholar, very smart guy, Jonathan Turley, likewise stated, it's a real Frankenstein case. It's made up of different parts that don't hold together. And it's frightening if this can be replicated in the future. You can't do cases like this. This is an outrage. A veteran New York City attorney told Left Wing Rolling Stone magazine, this is a magazine that I've never read, but probably doesn't like Trump. Left Wing is, to put it mildly, this case, they say, this is Rolling Stone. This case is a joke, frankly. And I've litigated against this office for 33 years. This case is an absolute joke. These are people that hate me, they're saying this. Can you imagine if they liked me, how good they'd be? <laughs> and a liberal Fordham University law professor writing in the New York Times called the case a disaster, a legal embarrassment, and a setback to the rule of law and order and a really bad thing for New York. And businesses aren't going to move into New York because of what they're doing. Their legal system is shot. It's a joke all over the world. But when I walk into that courtroom, I know I will have the love of 200 million Americans behind me. And I will be fighting for the. That's right. That's right. And I will be fighting for the freedom of 325 million Americans. This election is a choice between the Biden fascist state or the American Republic. It's called, we are going to make this country so great again, and we're going to do it fast. We're going to do it really fast. You know, right now, millions of people are entering our country from prisons, from mental institutions. They're coming from all over the world, all over the world. A vote for Joe Biden is a vote to end the rule of law. And it's a vote to destroy America, as you know it. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote to save America's future, a vote to save American democracy, and a vote to save American freedom. And as I say, and I've said tonight, and I'll say it again and again, and I mean it so much, you know, when we had a beautiful November day, 2016, we won an election, and people are still angry about it because we weren't anticipated. They rig everything. We weren't anticipated to win that election. And what I've done to insult them is we won that election, and then we did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016, getting millions and millions of votes more. But this is going to be really special because I will tell you, 2016, we had spirit like nobody's ever seen before. 2020 blew the spirit away of 2016. We had not only do we get millions more votes, 
I think the spirit was even greater. But now, because we've seen how bad they are, added to the fact that you like the job I do, you like the fact that countries respect us, you like the fact that we were energy independent on all of the things, you like the fact that I got you the largest tax cut in the history of our country, and they're going to raise your taxes by four times, four times, think of that. Take your taxes and multiply times four. That's what you're going to be paying if this, if this person, this person, this person gets in. But I say this and I say it. I said in 2016 that this is going to be the most important election we've ever had. But I say now, because 2016, I won to a certain extent on the border, and then I fixed the border. And when I fixed it, I wanted to make speeches in 2020 about the border. And my people said, sir, but the difference is I listen to myself. I don't listen to anybody. He listens to his people. He listens to his communist handlers, okay? He does whatever they want him to do. But my people did say, sir, they don't want to hear about the border. You fixed it. I said, I want to talk about the border. They said, sir, you fixed it. We went on. We had an unbelievable election, getting millions more votes than we did in 2016. But the election was rigged. The election was rigged. Pure and simple. 2020 was rigged. It was a disgrace. We could never let it happen again. The difference, though, is this is compared to 2016 and the border. This border is a hundred times worse. This is the worst border of any country in the history of the world. There has never been a border like this where millions and millions and millions of people are coming in totally unchecked and unvetted. The American people are going to stand up and they're going to stand up to the lies and the witch hunt and the corruption of Biden. He is the most incompetent president in the history of our country. He is the most corrupt president in the history of our country. And he is the worst president by far in the history of our country. And on did we have to get him out on November 5th. We have to get Biden the hell out of office and send him back to wherever he comes from. We have to get him out. Thank you very much. We have to get him out. You know, you look at all the things that are happening, everything. The whole world is ablaze. You know, it's interesting. Viktor Orban, who is the prime minister of Hungary, very strong guy, very strong person. I think happens to be a very good person, but a very strong person, doesn't play games, didn't want any illegal immigrants in his country. You know, then they say, oh, he's such a bad. Well, they asked him three weeks ago, what's going on with the world? What's going on? Everybody's fighting Russia, Ukraine, Israel. The Middle East is blowing up. Everything's blowing up. China's going to be next with Taiwan because of weakness. China's going to be next. What's going on? He said, Bring Donald Trump back as president and it'll all stop. It'll all stop. He said it. And he said something else that I wouldn't say it because I wouldn't really like the word. China was afraid of Donald Trump. Russia was afraid of Donald Trump. Everybody was afraid. I don't want to say that. I want to say they respected me. But the fact is, none of this stuff would be happening. None of it would be happening right now. We'd have a country that would be peaceful, prosperous. We would have, we would have had no inflation. Inflation was caused by energy. This stupid person, what he did with energy was that it went up 40, 50, 60 percent. That affects everything. Everything, if you make donuts, Everything is more expensive. It's so bad. When you look at food prices now, where it's gone up by double and triple and quadruple, and you can never get that back, but we're going to get it way down, I promise you. And we're going to bring your energy so low. We're going to bring your energy prices so low that other things will follow. And that's what happened. It's very simple. 
instead of trying to have corrupt prosecutors fight his battles, what he's doing, he's incompetent. And what he's doing, and it's not, I don't believe it's even him. I think it's the people that want to keep their jobs around him. They're communists. They want to keep the job because I don't think he has, I don't think he has any clue. I don't think he has any clue. So listen, what we have a little, look at this one. That's for him. Very, it's slight. I call it slight. See the podium? I'm calling on Crooked Joe Biden to debate anytime, anywhere, any place. Right there. And we have to debate because our country is going in the wrong direction so badly. And while it's a little bit typically early, we have to debate. We have to explain to the American people what the hell is going on because they're looking at the border and they're looking at inflation and they're looking at the economy, which is terrible. They're looking at every single aspect of our country. They look at the fact that the world is laughing at our leader and laughing at us. And just four years ago was the exact opposite. We were the most respected country in the world. We were the most respected that we were ever respected. Nobody, we were never more respected than we were four years ago. It's no wonder Joe Biden and his thugs, that's all they are, their weak thugs, are so desperate to stop us. They know that we are the only ones who can stop them. And all of this persecution of Donald Trump, I don't mind, I'll, I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for you. But all of this persecution is only happening because I'm running for president and leading very big in the polls. We're leading so big, they are going crazy. They are going crazy. In the Wall Street Journal, they just came out with a poll. We're leading big in a place called, have you ever heard of Pennsylvania? And nationwide, we're leading by four points, six points, nine points, 11 points. We're leading by a lot. Now they cheat, so we have to give ourselves a lead. They cheat like hell. And when you see them cheating, you get out there and start screaming, start screaming. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor because I am being indicted for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Never forget our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never, ever, ever let them take away your freedom. I will not let it happen. It's what they're trying to do. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. And I just happen to be standing in their way and I always will be in their way. So job number one is going to be, and as soon as we take office, we will seal the border. Is that okay? And we're going to stop the invasion and send Joe Biden's illegal aliens back home. We had the safest border, the most secure border in the history of our country four years ago. The safest border in the history of our country. There are charts out that just came out from Homeland Security, if you can believe that. And uh, I don't know where the hell your board is. Put it up instead of the back of my head. I'd love to have that chart. But it shows that the lowest number ever of illegal immigrants coming in was my last week in office before this very, very, very horrible president took over. You know, one thing good about it, though, Jimmy Carter's a nice man. Jimmy Carter looks like a brilliant president by comparison <laughs> to Crooked Joe Biden. Crooked Joe Biden, he is, uh, he is the worst. Jimmy, Jimmy Carter is a happy man. Oh, hey, that's a good staff. I didn't think that fine, that one. That's the one. See the arrow?
Jimmy Carter looks like a brilliant president by comparison to crooked Joe Biden. Crooked Joe Biden, he is, uh, he is the worst. Jimmy, Jimmy Carter is a happy man. Oh, hey, that's a good staff. I didn't think that fine, that one. That's the one. See the arrow? there 42,000 you know we expected maybe because it's freezing right it's freezing I'm freezing my ass off up here at least they could have given me a little bit of a heater underneath this they gave me nothing see they take advantage my own people take advantage of me they gave me nothing but uh, it's one of those things isn't it but you know we expected maybe 10,000 people we have 42,000 people tonight. 42,000. As far as the eye can see, I wish, the, I wish the fake news media would turn those cameras. Look at all those cameras. Wow. Wow. People, you can solve the problem with a phone call if they respect you. They're coming from Somalia. They're coming from Syria. They're coming from all over the place. What is disconcerting, we have 31,000 people over the last few months, Mr. Congressman and Mr. Cong we got a lot of great congressmen here tonight. We have senators, we have congressmen, we have governors. And it's so cold, I don't think I'm going to even introduce them. <laughs> what again? But think of it. They're coming in from China, 31, 32,000 over the last few months, and they're all military age, and they mostly are men. And it sounds like to me, are they trying to build a little army in our country? Is that what they're trying to do? And Biden doesn't know because the guy doesn't have a clue. 
failing and its country wrecking. They're destroying our country. They're wrecking our country. As a citizen, I demand that Joe Biden close the border immediately. Close it. Close the border, Joe. You can do it. He doesn't need Congress. You know, as president, I never had Congress tell me to close the border. I closed the border. Again, the best border, the safest border in the history of our country. I built 571 miles of wall. I got Mexico to give us thousands of soldiers free of charge to protect us while we were building the wall. We were going to add 200 miles of wall. And then we had a rigged election. And he took over. And you know what he did? He sold all of it. Was, all you had to do is it would have been done in three weeks. He sold it for five cents on the dollar. He sold our beautiful wall panels. People want our country. It's true, though. It, can you imagine that? That's when I realized this guy actually believes. Think of the things they believe in. High taxes. They're going to quadruple your taxes. Uh, they're going to destroy your Social Security because all of these people putting in are going to make it impossible for them to serve. It's true, though. It, can you imagine that? That's when I realized this guy actually believes. Think of the things they believe in. High taxes. They're going to quadruple your taxes. Uh, they're going to destroy your Social Security because all of these people putting in are going to make it impossible for them to serve. Badly injured, as you know, badly, badly injured. She was a top swimmer. She grew up with the top swimmers all over California, all over the country. And she was in and she wanted to break that record. She was going to break it, too. She was. They believe in high taxes. They're going to quadruple your taxes. Uh, they're going to destroy your Social Security because all of these people putting in are going to make it impossible for them to badly injured, as you know, badly, badly injured.
She was a top swimmer. She grew up with the top swimmers all over California, all over the country. And she was in and she wanted to break that record. She was going to break it, too. She was. That was my one of my years. Terrorist into our nation. Zero. It actually said zero. I don't even believe that. I mean, I want to believe it, but that's hard to believe, right? But it actually said zero. And then you go on to 2021, 2022, and they had thousands of people pouring in, terrorists. But it actually said 2019, zero, zero. I don't believe that, but I know it was very low because we really watched it closely. We watched it like nobody has ever watched it. And I was very proud of that. I was very, it's probably the only time they ever said anything that was actually better than the fact, right? Right here in eastern Pennsylvania, you had an illegal alien criminal who murdered a woman in Chester County, stabbing her 38 times in front of her seven-year-old daughter and her four-year-old son, a violent criminal. He was a violent, violent person. Then in September, that same illegal alien escaped from Chester County prison and prowled through suburban communities. You all know about him. Hiding in backyards, breaking into homes until he was found with a stolen gun and he was ready to do massive damage all over your community. Joe Biden's border bloodbath. That's what it is. It's a bloodbath, a word that they misrepresented. His border bloodbath ends the day I take the oath of office. We will stop the plunder, the rape, the slaughter, the destruction of American suburbs and cities and towns. We will end deadly sanctuary cities. You know, the Democrat mayors want to all end them, but they don't want to, you know, really take on because they end up getting indicted. You know, they go after these people when they go against when they go against D.C. establishment, they end up getting indicted. So the Democrat mayors don't like sanctuary cities, but they're afraid to get indicted. I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement to immigration enforcement. We will enforce our immigration laws stricter and stronger than anybody has ever done, including me, including me. We will impose a naval blockade on the cartels. You know, when we stopped them on land, they, they're very rich. They had ships, the most beautiful ships you've ever seen. I mean, these guys are loaded, nothing but cash. And they were having boats and ships on the ocean, on the ocean, the Gulf, come in through different ways. They're very ingenious. The only thing they understand is strength. They understand strength and it'll all stop. You know, when I met with President Xi of China, I said, do you have a drug problem? No, 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 we have no drug problem. Why is that? Quick trial. I said, tell me about a quick trial. When they catch the seller of drugs, right, the purveyor of drugs, they immediately give them, the drug dealers, they immediately give them a trial. It takes one day, one day. At the end of that day, if they're guilty, which they always are, according to people that study this, I think, I don't think anybody has never been guilty. Within one day, that person is executed. They execute their... They execute the drug dealers. They have zero drug problem. Zero. They have zero drug problem in Singapore and other places. Instead, we set up blue ribbon committees made of dilettantes from all over the country that know nothing about the, the genius, the, the evil genius of these drug lords that are taking us for a ride and the cartels that are making billions and billions of dollars because Joe Biden is a stupid person. We have a we have a president who's a stupid person. On day one, we will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. So we're pleased to be joined on this extremely beautiful but little chilly like about, you know, but Chile, this is not bad. When I won the primary in Iowa, we won in a record.
Get it? Because he can't speak. He can't walk. He almost fell out of a helicopter the other day. I mean, there's only four stairs. He held on for dear life. Oh, thank you. Those, those two fingers were just strong enough to hold him. But you know, in all fairness to him, he beat all the competition. He beat it. Now, they did things that aren't, impre you know, what they did to Kennedy was terrible. They did what they did. That's what they do. They're fascists, okay? But what they did was terrible. But he did beat the competition. He did it, I think, probably unfairly, just like they cheated on the last election. But they did beat the competition. But I'm really popular. And I'm popular not necessarily. I think I have a nice personality. What do you think? I think so. And it's not terrible. Our great first lady said, I can't imagine why they think you're not a nice person. She might be kidding when she says that. I don't know. But, but you know, I get these levels of pop. I'm, I'm popular. Ronald Reagan was at 86 percent. Donald Trump is at 95 percent. That's popular, right? So why do these thugs and these fake news people, and there's so many cameras back there, I can't believe, that's a lot of cameras. But you know what, whenever I start talking about them, the cameras go off because I start talking about how bad they are. They're less popular than Congress, can you believe that? And speaking of Congress, but we have great ones, we only deal with the great ones, and we have great people here that love our country and they're members of Congress. Dan Muser, Dan. Lloyd Schmucker. Lloyd, where is Lloyd? He's around here someplace. Lloyd, where are you? Yes? Hi, Lloyd. These are great people. Former congressman, he was a great congressman, Fred Keller. Where's Fred? Hi, Fred. Are you cold in there? You don't have a coat? He's all man, that guy. I'd like to do that too, but I just refuse to freeze. I love these guys. Well, Mike Keller, he used to come up with just an undershirt on. It would be like two degrees out. But he's a very special guy, Mike Kelly. What a great guy. State Treasurer Stacy Garrity. Whoa. Beautiful, beautiful person. She's a beautiful person. State Senator Jarrett Coleman. Jarrett. Where's Jarrett? Hi, Jarrett. Good job you're doing. State Representative Zach Mako. And Mulo McKenzie. And we have a special person with us tonight, RNC chairman just newly installed. He's a tough cookie. He's going to stop voter theft. He's going to stop steal the vote. He's going to he's going to stop stop the steal. We have lots of different. The bottom line is we don't need any votes. We have all the votes. What we need is on Election Day, which unfortunately is now called election period because some of these things go 48 days. What the hell are they doing for 48 days? You know what they're doing? They're stealing the vote. But this guy was the head of the Republican Party in North Carolina, and North Carolina was solid. It wasn't like Pennsylvania. It wasn't like other places that went wah at the very end when all those votes came in or late or early in the morning. Remember, we won Pennsylvania. We were up like by hundreds of thousands of votes. We said, and then all of a sudden, wah. And we all know what happened. But it didn't happen in North Carolina, and it's not going to happen in Pennsylvania, and it's not going to happen in Georgia this time. It's not going to happen. RNC Chairman Michael Watley. Michael. Great job, Michael. That was like, uh, he had 600 lawyers working for him, and there was nobody tougher on Stop the Steal. And thank you also to our super volunteers, Mike O'Hare and Al Smith, Bob Smith and Jessica Ware. They've been unbelievable, the job they've done from day one. And they've been with me and they said, we've never seen enthusiasm like this time. The one said, Jessica said, you know, in 2016, it was good, really good. It was incredible. It was like a happening. 2020 was just as good and maybe even better, sir. This blows both of them away. And I think it's true. Because you know what? You look at this crowd. You look at this crowd, which you can't see the end of it. But you look at this crowd. And in all fairness, we're six and a half months away from that's a long time. Most of these candidates on the night before the election 
would have a crowd that would be their largest crowd, and they wouldn't have anywhere near the people that we have right now. We're six and a half months away. I wish we could move the election to Tuesday. Is there anything we can do? I want to move the election to Tuesday. You know, in the UK, they can pick their election. They say, we're going to have the election next week. I want to be able to do that. Would that be possible? From the very first day that we take back the White House from crooked Joe Biden, I believe we're going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. In my first four years, I kept my promise to Pennsylvania, and we ended the disaster known as NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with the brand new USMCA, that's Mexico, Canada, the best trade deal they say ever made for our country. And frankly, I know it's good because Mexico and Canada want to redo it. They want to renew it, and they want it uh, changed, and crooked Joe Biden will probably do it. How much? How much? Give me... Give me a couple of million bucks, I'll get it done. How much will it take to get crooked, Joe? Don't change the USMCA. They took advantage of, of us with NAFTA for years. Don't change it. Don't change it. They have to have it. But it's always nice when you make a deal and they want to change it. I took on communist China like no administration. percent we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100 or 200 percent and you know what that is basically you screw us and we screw you and then everybody is even and you know what happens there's no tax because everyone says just forget it we will always protect social security and medicare for our great seniors biden can't do that as president i kept that promise and I will keep it once again. I didn't touch your Social Security or your Medicare. And there were plenty of Democrats that said, do it. We're not doing it. You know, we have liquid gold under our feet, so much so that we don't use. We don't have to do things that people think. We have more liquid gold, oil, gas, a lot of things, coal, coal. You know, coal fires up the plants. Do you know that China right now is building a massive coal plant every single week. They're opening up a coal plant every single week while we struggle with wind. Where's the wind? You know the other problem? We can't get the windmills. You know why? They're made in China. China says, don't worry about America. We'll give them. But wind doesn't work anyway. It's too expensive. It doesn't work. Kills all your birds. If you'd like to see a nice bird cemetery, walk under a windmill sometime. You'll see more dead birds than anything. 
You know, if you shoot an American eagle like a bald eagle, they put you in jail for five years. But the windmill, kill, they kill them by the thousands. You know that, right, Mr. Congressman? They kill them by the thousands. So we're very off as a country. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, it's we. I will have the horrible war. That's right. I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine totally settled. I will settle it. And I will pre I, and I'm the only one that can say this because these other people have no clue. I will prevent World War Three. And remember, World War Three would be a war like no other because of nuclear weapons and many other types of weapons that are at a level that nobody can even imagine. You don't even want to talk about it. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety and beauty better than they have ever been before. We're going to rebuild our cities and we're going to work with Democrat mayors and Democrat governors if we have to. But we're going to rebuild our cities because our cities are going to hell. We will take over the horribly run capital of our nation in Washington, D.C. and clean it up, renovate it and rebuild our capital city so that it's no longer a nightmare of murder and crime. Do you see the crime that's going on in Washington, our beautiful Washington, D.C.? People are being murdered all the time. They come from Pennsylvania and they want to go and see our capital and they get murdered. So much crime, so much horrible, violent crime. But rather, it will become the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. We're going to clean it up and we're going to make it safe so our congressmen can walk into that wonderful place that should be a wonderful place. And right now, it looks like hell. It's filthy, dirty with graffiti all over the place, garbage all over the streets, roads with potholes. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity or other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children. I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And as I very embarrassingly said before, I will keep men out of women's sports, okay? And I will fully uphold our great Second Amendment, which is so important. You know, for four years, despite tremendous efforts by the Democrats on the Second Amendment, we didn't budge an inch. We didn't budge an inch. And I think you all know that. We will protect innocent life and we will restore free speech and we will do it quickly. And I will secure our elections. We're going to end up paper ballots, same day voting and voter ID. Our goal will be, our goal will be that we want to have paper ballots. We want to have proof of citizenship. We want now, because you know they have all these people coming in. We want proof of citizenship. It's very important. But until then, Republicans must win. We want a landslide that is too big to rig. If you get the numbers, too big to rig. I love these people. Look, they're huddled together. They're huddled together. It's freezing out here. They're huddled together. I love it. It's freezing. I hope they know each other. Do those people, they're like, they're so close. I've never seen, I hope you're related. <laughs> I don't know if they are. I think that he'd never met her in his life. And his wife is sitting right over here. This is, this is not a good situation. This is, this is politically unacceptable, sir. I have to call you out. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done, the worst president in history. So if you want to save America, then get everyone you know, register them, register Republican and vote. The Pennsylvania primary is Tuesday, April 23rd. Go out and vote. And you know what, sir? You know what? Somebody that you have to vote for. All our congressmen are in great shape, right, Dan? I think you're in great shape. All of them are in great shape. Everybody, they've all got. But I am officially giving my endorsement to David McCormick tonight. He's a good man. He wants to run a good ship. 
He's a smart guy. He was a very successful guy. He's given up a lot to do this. And I'll tell you what, he's the nominee of the Republican Party. David McCormick, go out and vote for him because Casey doesn't do a damn thing. I tell you, he doesn't do a thing. So go out and vote for him. Sign up, volunteer for our campaign, and let's win big in November. In conclusion, and in conclusion, together, we are taking on some of the most menacing forces and vicious opponents our people have ever seen. They are vicious and they are horrible. But no matter how hateful and corrupt the communists and criminals we're fighting against may be, you must never forget this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. This is your home. This is your heritage. And our American liberty is your God given right. Your God given right. From Harrisburg to Pittsburgh, from Easton to Bethlehem, and from Johnstown to Allentown, we stand on the shoulders of American legends who poured out their blood, sweat, and tears for our rights and for our freedoms. And it's been a very rough period of time, I'll tell you what, for this country it's never had. I don't think our country has ever been so low. But we're going to change it. We're going to get numbers like nobody's ever seen. I think we're going to swamp them. And this isn't, this isn't drain the swamp. This is we're going to swamp them. We're also going to drain the swamp. It's a double swamp. Pennsylvania is where our founding fathers declared American independence. So much history. I mean, you have so much history here. Just think of it. It's where the army weathered its brutal winter. We're sort of weathering it right now, but I don't think. Theirs was much worse. It's where the army weathered its brutal winter at Valley Forge, where General George Washington led his men on a daring mission across the Delaware, and where our union was saved by the immortal heroes at Gettysburg. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was, the Battle of Gettysburg. What an unbelievable, I mean, it was so much and so interesting and so vicious and horrible and so beautiful in so many different ways. It, it represented such a big portion of the success of this country. Gettysburg, wow. I go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, to look and to watch. And uh, the statement of Robert E. Lee, who's no longer in favor. Did you ever notice that? No longer in favor. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill. They were fighting uphill. He said, wow, that was a big mistake. He lost his great general. And uh, they were fighting, never fight uphill, me boys, but it was too late. And this is the state where generations of tough, strong Pennsylvania miners, factory workers, and steel workers forged the greatest nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, willpower, and strength. We are a nation that has lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. And remember, it was hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it's hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. 2024 is our final battle. That is our final battle. We are either going to have a great nation again, or we're going to have a failed nation. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communist, Marxist, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. We will rout the fake news media. We will drain the swamp, and we will liberate our country from these tyrants and villains once and for all. They are tyrants, they are villains, and they hate our country. Like those patriots before us, we will not bend, we will not break, we will not yield. We will never give in, we will never give up, and we will never, ever, ever, ever back down. With your support, we will go on to victory, the likes of which no one has ever seen, and we will evict crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country, from the White House on November 5th, 2024. And that date will go down as the most important day in American history. I believe that, because we're ready to be a failed nation. We're a failed nation right now. 
The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. It wasn't forgotten four years ago, I can tell you that. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much, Pennsylvania. God bless you. God bless you all. Thank you. First of all, we know that Pennsylvania has been a battleground state. President Biden will be campaigning here almost all week next week as well. What do you think are the top concerns for voters here in this state? And what has changed or not changed over the past three years? Well, some of the important things are immigration, making sure the people coming into our country, we know who they are. They're coming here legally. Uh, another thing is uh, inflation has been rampant over the last three years. Uh, and, and I can go back to 1984 and say, are you better off now than you were four years ago? No, we're not. We need the policies of President Trump that are going to secure our borders, make the world a safer place because they know America is back and it's strength, strength and, and, and really going to stand up and fight the forces of evil around the globe. But more importantly, here at home, take care of our citizens and make sure that we have a good economy. 
Jackson Liu have heard a lot of controversies about the issue of abortion. There has been some criticism regarding how former President Trump um, kind of didn't go on to continue to support a national ban on abortion. What's your message to some evangelical voters who might be concerned about that? Well, as you notice, I've got my, my pro-life pin on here. I'm as pro-life as you get. And President Trump appointed the justices that helped make that decision to send it back to the states where it belongs. Okay? I believe in life. If you have a politician that's not going to stand up for your life, you're not going to stand up for anything. President Trump has done that his entire career. He appointed justices to the Supreme Court that voted on that important decision and sent it back to the states where it belongs. And do you think this issue of abortion would significantly impact the 2024 elections when it comes to you know, some mo maybe moderate voters who might be deciding between this? I think more of the important issues is how are they being able to succeed in America? You know, and the policies of President Trump helped you do that from life, from birth, with the decision of the Supreme Court from the justices he appointed, up through to including his policies on making our economy strong and protecting our borders. And next on Monday, President Trump will be testifying at his trial in New York. Do you think that publicity is going to be very high profile for sure? Do you think that further publicity about his legal cases um, would how how would input how would impact the election and the race going forward? Well, I don't think it should impact the election at all, quite frankly, because uh, when you look at what's happened in all these cases, it's people that ran for office uh, saying they wanted to get President Trump. You know, so really, is this truth or is it them just trying to put a, push a social agenda or not a social agenda, but a political agenda on somebody to try and get them not to vote for the president, the former president? I've certainly seen uh, for President Trump's popularity actually going up amid all these um, legal cases. What is your message to President Biden amid all, all this, you know, legal challenges facing President Trump? We have heard Trump calling on Biden to stop, you know, such prosecution. What's your message to the president? My message to President Biden? How about I use his own words? Don't. Stop doing it. Don't persecute an American because you disagree with his views, okay? And don't support people that have run for office and got elected on that basis. You can't run on his own record. That's the problem. He has no record to run on because things are far worse than they were four years ago. So he's trying to attack his opponent. If his message isn't good enough, then he shouldn't be running somebody else down. That's all he's got to do. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. I appreciate it.